online tutorial classes here at my dreams academy my name is abba musebio and i'm your tutor for today i'm going to take you through a brief course on biology well i'm going to talk about cell division and my outline is pretty more simple if you meet up with this at the end of today's tutorial then you met up with a very simple objective we're going to look at what a cell is Look at the various types of cells and the mortalities within which we classify them. We also will look at what cell division is all about, the reasons for cell divisions, and then the different types of cell divisions. Okay, let's start with the very first objective. What is a cell? Well, as a form of introduction, I want you to realize that life generally is built from very basic building blocks. It is these building blocks that we refer to as cells. So the cell, as a definition, is referred to as building block of life or the structural and functional units from which life is built. Okay? There are various types of cells, but I will use two criteria for classifying today as it will make so much sense for my topic. The very first criteria I will use in classifying cells will be upon the, the presence or absence of a true nucleus. In that case, cells are classified into prokaryotic cells. And eukaryotic cells. So this is one way of classifying cells based upon the presence or absence of a true nucleus. We have prokaryotic cells and we have eukaryotic cells. This modality is not useful here. There is also another modality we use in classifying cells and that will have some relevance to my topic and that's what I'm going to use. Whether the cell has the ability to divide or not. Using this modality we have labile cells, labile cells, labile cells, we have stable cells, and we have permanent cells, and we have permanent cells. Now, labile cells are cells that have the ability to divide. In fact, they constantly divide. All the time, they keep on dividing. Whereas stable cells, on the other hand, as the name implies, retain the ability to divide through, but then they do so only when the need arises. They do not constantly divide like the labile cells, but they still have the ability to divide. Whereas the last kind of cells, the permanent cells, have lost the ability to divide. Now, examples of cells that are labile are the cells you find on your skin, for example. The cells you find in your bone marrow, producing your red blood cells and your white blood cells and your platelets. Examples of stable cells are, for example, your liver cells. The liver cells have the ability to divide but they do not do that constantly all the time. They can only do that, for example, when someone's liver is injured and then the remaining cells will have to regenerate and form up the other lost cells. Permanent cells, examples you have in your body are nervous cells. The cells that make up nervous tissues, like the cells that make up your brain, your spinal cord, your peripheral nerves, they have lost the ability to divide. And those kind of cells are called permanent cells. Now, this, for now, is the criteria that is important for me in cell division. So, as a form of recap, I'm saying a cell is the basic structural and functional unit of life. I've used two modalities to classify them into prokaryotic and eukaryotic based upon the presence or absence of a true nucleus. And then I've also classified them into labile, stable, and permanent cells based on their abilities to divide. Now, what are the reasons for cell divisions? Why do cells divide? Well, cells divide for a whole lot of reasons, but it is very clear. These three reasons I want to give us. Cells divide, one, for growth. Another, reasons, another reason why cells divide is to replace one out tissues. Replace one out, one out tissues. So replace one out tissues. Another reason why cells divide is for reproduction. So these are the three main reasons why cells in the body will divide. 
either because they want to cause growth or they want to replace one out of dead tissues or because they want to bring about reproduction. Okay? So I've met up with three objectives so far. I've told you about what a cell is, I've told you about the types of cells, I've told you about what cell division is all about, I've told you about the reason for cell division, and now I want to talk about the types of cell division. Well, cells employ two forms of cell divisions, and these two forms are mitosis and meiosis. Okay, now let's look at mitosis. And first, let's look at mitosis as a form of cell division. Mitosis. Mitosis. Well, to make this more understandable, there is a concept I would like to introduce you guys to. That is the concept of the cell cycle. The cell cycle. Okay? Every living thing has a cycle of life. And because the cells are living, they also have that same cycle. The cell cycle refers to the series of events from when a cell is created to when the cell either dies or divides into two. Is that okay? So it has two main parts. It has an interface. I will present that with an eye. And a division phase. The division phase may be a mitosis or may be a meiosis. There are two forms of division. So I will represent that by a D. So an interface and a phase of division. Is that okay? Now the interface refers to the very first period from when the cell is created to when the cell divides. So from the point of creation to when the point where the cell wants to divide, that phase is called an interface. The interface on the other hand is divided into three parts. It is divided into a G1, an S, and a G2 phase. This is the interface. Then the division may be mitosis, as I've already said, or maybe meiosis, maybe meiosis, whichever one the cell does. I'll still talk about these things. Okay, now the interface has G1, S, and G2. The G1 refers to growth 1. The cell is growing, the cell is preparing to divide, the cell is performing its normal functions as a cell. Then at the S phase, the cell gets really prepared for division, it synthesizes its genetic material at the S phase. So the DNA in the nucleus will be doubled at the S phase. Then after that, the cell enters another temporary stage called the G2 stage, where it again grows and checks, and double checks what it has done in the S phase. Is that okay? So this is what makes up the interface before the cell division begins improper. So now let's try the cell divisions improper. I'm saying there are two types. We have mitosis and we have meiosis. Now let's start mitosis. Mitosis. Mitosis is a form of cell division that occurs mainly in cells called somatic cells. They call them somatic cells. Now you might not know what somatic cell is, what a somatic cell is. A somatic cell, pay attention, is a cell that is not involved in sexual reproduction. In man, for example, the cells of the eye, the cells of muscles, the cells of bone, the cells of the kidney or liver are somatic. They are body cells. They are not involved in sexual reproduction. And they are the ones that basically carry out mitosis. Meiosis is employed in non-somatic cells or cells called germ cells. They call them germ cells. These cells are very essential in sexual reproduction. For example, the egg cells in the ova of a lady are not somatic. They are germ cells and they carry out meiosis. I will, I will talk about that more as I go on. So, I say mitosis as a form of cell division occurs in somatic cells. And it eventually leads to the formation of two identical daughter cells. Two identical daughter cells. Okay? These two daughter cells are identical and they look just like the original parent that formed them. Okay? There is no genetic diversity, not at all. No genetic diversity. No genetic diversity. There's no genetic diversity between the two cells. Everything remains the same. Is that okay? That's mitosis. On the other hand, meiosis, as I've said, occurs in germ cells, which are cells involved in sexual reproduction, like the sperm cells or the egg cells in ladies. 
Okay, so it means information of sperm, information of ova uh, is basically by meiosis. Okay, now in meiosis, the end product is usually four daughter cells, four unidentical daughter cells, four unidentical, four unidentical daughter cells. Four unidentical daughter cells, and there is usually genetic diversity. Genetic diversity. Okay? And it is because of this genetic diversity that makes the very essential differences between me and my younger brother, for example. So two, two siblings from the same parents do not look exactly the same because of genetic diversity that occurs in meiosis. Is that okay? Now let's look at mitosis improper. Okay? Mitosis as a form of cell division is divided into four stages. Mitosis is divided into four stages. The first stage is a prophase. The second stage is a metaphase. The third stage is an anaphase. The last phase is a telophase. It's a telophase. Well, if you condense this into an acronym, you're going to have P mat. So that will help you remember this list in order. A prophase, a metaphase, an anaphase, and a telophase. These are the stages that make up mitosis. Okay? Now, the prophase of mitosis, as it implies, a prophase, a beginning phase. The cell is just about to divide. In fact, the cell is preparing to divide. So what happens in prophase? What happens in prophase? What happens in prophase? What then happens in prophase? Okay? Let's take a closer look at what happens in prophase. Now this is a normal cell. A cell membrane, a nuclear membrane, and then a cytoplasm all around. Okay? Now this is a nuclear membrane. Within this nucleus in the cell, I'm talking about a normal cell not dividing, a normal cell in interface, not dividing. Uh, a, a normal cell will have a cell membrane and a nuclear membrane. Within the nucleus, within this nucleus, you have genetic material in form of chromatin. Chromatin is decondensed, thread-like genetic material. You can't see them, they are decondensed, thread-like, carrying out their normal functions. Okay, now just before mitosis occurs, or let me talk about prophase. At prophase, what happens? This decondensed genetic material, don't forget the name, chromatin. This chromatin, which is the condensed genetic material, will condense. By that I mean it will wrap up, it will fold up into visible solid chromosomes. Chromosomes. So chromatin is basically the same as chromosome. The difference is chromatin is decondensed and thread-like and probably not visible. Chromosomes are the condensed form of chromatin. Okay? And the very thing that happens and the very thing that happens in prophase is this condensation of chromatin. Chromatin will condense into chromosomes. So at prophase, what you're going to see is not thread-like material. You're going to see this. Solid material solid material you can see them they are now big so whereas this is chromatin this is chromosome this is chromosome so that's the first thing that happens in prophase but that's not the only thing that happens in prophase you don't want to divide the cell with the nuclear membrane still present so this nuclear membrane breaks down and that's why you don't see it here so if i was to make a list the first thing is the nuclear membrane breaks down. Nuclear membrane would break down. Nuclear membrane breaks down. Condensation of chromatin. Well, another thing that happens is in normal cells, you probably don't see centrioles. But if the cell wants to divide, centrioles will appear and migrate to both ends. Centrioles are structures that provide spindle fibers. 
Well, in my other lecture, I've talked about the structure of the cell and what all these things do. You could check up that, that video. I'll, I'll leave a description, I'll leave a link on the description below for you to check it out. Okay, so centrioles will appear. Centrioles will appear and will migrate to opposite ends and will migrate to opposite ends. So that, that, that's a lot that happens in the prophase. Centrioles, we call them centrioles. Centrioles will appear and migrate to opposite ends. To opposite ends. To opposite ends. Okay, I'm still talking about prophase. I'm looking at everything that happens in mitosis. I'm saying there is a prophase, there is a metaphase, there is an, an anaphase, and a telophase. I'm saying prophase is actually a beginning phase in which the cell prepares for whatever is going to happen during the division. I'm saying the first thing that happens is a condensation of chromatin into chromosomes, the disappearance of a nuclear membrane, and the appearance and migration of centrioles to both ends of the cell. Is that okay? This is basically what happens in prophase. And then one other important thing that happens here is the formation of what is called spindle fibers. Spindle fibers begin to form. Spindle fibers form. Okay, spindle fibers are thread like material that could move these chromosomes apart. So, this is normal cell at interface, this is a cell at prophase. Is that okay? So, so far, I've talked about all of this and I've looked at prophase. Now, let's look at what happens in metaphase. What happens in okay? Well, this is now metaphase at metaphase. The centrioles that were formed and were migrating to the ends have eventually got into the ends. So you have one centriole and we have another centriole like that. They are now at the ends. They form spindle fibers all across. They form spindle fibers all across. They form spindle fibers just like that. They form spindle fibers. Is that okay? Then the chromosomes of course, don't forget, the chromosomes are condensed genetic material. That's what differentiates them from chromatin. The chromosomes were already replicated in the S phase of interface. So they now have, each chromosome has a double. And each chromosome is double. And then each of those double is called a chromatin. So if this was chromosome, each chromosome is double. Okay? And each split of the chromosome is called a chromatin. So as we say, you have chromosomes like that. So this is one full chromosome. This is one split of the chromosome. This is another split of the chromosome. Each of these splits is called a chromatid. It's called what? A chromatid. It's called a chromatid. Chromatid. Now, I want you to differentiate between chromatin, chromosomes, and chromatin, and chromatin. It's very, very important to differentiate between these. Whereas chromatin is decondensed genetic material. Chromosomes are condensed genetic material. Usually in metaphase or usually in mitosis, each chromosome is made up of a double split. Each of those split is a chromatid. Is a chromatid. Is that okay? So each of these chromatids are usually held together at a point called centromere. Is that okay? So this is how the chromosomes look like in mitosis. So you have two chromatids connected at a centromere. So the centromere is that point of attachment between the two chromatids that make up the chromosome. Okay? During metaphase, these chromosomes made up of chromatids now will line up in the equator of the cell. So they line up horizontally along the equator of the cell. Along the equator of the cell. Along the equator of each cell. Along the equator of each cell. Like that. Like that. Just like this, okay? Just like this, just like this. This stage is called the metaphase stage, okay? This is the metaphase. So this is interface, this is prophase, this is metaphase, this is metaphase. Now the next stage is anaphase, anaphase, let's call it A, anaphase, anaphase. Okay? So this is still a centriole, 
at one end, a centriole at the other end with spindle fibers running through, spindle fibers running through, spindle fibers all along, spindle fibers running through, just like that. Okay? Now, in anaphase, what happens is these chromatids will separate and start moving to each hole of the cell. Each would separate out. So I have chroma chromatids like that. I have chromatids, chromatids separating and moving towards each hole. I have chromatids moving towards each hole. Okay? Moving towards each hole. So this is anaphase. You are separating the chromatids. The last phase is called telophase, a T phase, telophase. And in telophase, the all the opposites of prophase will happen, will happen. In telophase, the chromatids will arrive the bones. So the chromatids have arrived the bones like that. The chromatids have arrived the bones. They are now at the poles. They are now at the poles. Okay? Now, these chromatids are at the poles. A nuclear membrane will reappear on each side. A nuclear membrane will reappear on each side. Okay? They will decondense back to chromatin. They will decondense back to chromatin. And the centrioles will disappear. Spindle fibers will also disappear. In fact, everything that happened in prophase will reverse in telophase. Will reverse in telophase. Eventually, you can see that the nucleus of the cell has successfully divided into two nuclei from interface to prophase to metaphase to anaphase and telophase. The last thing that then, that then happens is for the cytoplasm of the cell to split into two. That process is called cytokinesis. It's called cytokinesis. Cytokinesis. That's the division of the cytoplasm into two. And eventually you have two daughter cells. You have two daughter cells. This is a run through of everything that happens in mitosis. Okay? For a recap, for a recap, I said cells would always divide and they have two options whenever they opt in for cell division. That might be mitosis or a meiosis. We've just looked at mitosis and I want to recap it. I said mitosis occurs in somatic cells. So my, mitosis, the takeaway, mitosis, it occurs in somatic cells, in somatic cells. And I explained what somatic cells are, are cells which are not involved in cellular reproduction, the body cells. I said it forms two identical daughter cells, two identical daughter cells are formed. Two identical daughter cells are formed. I said there is no genetic diversity, no genetic diversity, and I think I explained what that means. That means the genes or the genetic makeup of daughter cells formed are the same as those of the parent. No mistake, nothing, nothing. That there is no genetic diversity at all. And I'm saying it is made up of four stages, four stages, four stages, and I call them PMATs. Prophase, metaphase, anaphase, and telophase. I said the prophase consists of the, the very early stages in which the cell is getting ready for the cell division. I said the following events happen in the prophase that the nuclear membrane will disintegrate, this membrane will disappear, the chromatin, which is thread like, will condense into chromosomes, centrioles will appear and migrate to opposite ends of the cell and spindle fibers will form. In metaphase, the centrioles have reached opposite ends, spindle fibers have formed and these chromosomes which at this stage appear as chromatids connected at their center called centromen will line up in the equator with each attached to a spindle fiber at the centromen. In anaphase, the chromatids will separate and start moving towards opposite ends. Eventually, at telophase, the chromatids arrive at opposite ends, and the opposites of everything that happened in prophase will reoccur here. The nuclear membrane will reform, the chromatids will, decon will decondense back to chromatins, centrioles will disappear, spindle fibers will disappear, and eventually cytokinesis will occur. 
and by this mycosis has occurred and do not forget to hit the subscription button and also hit the notification icon so that you get notified on any of our subsequent videos also do not forget to share with your friends who will find this very useful comment any difficulties you have or any topics you recommend us to handle on the comment section below and thank you